It's still good morning, Nigeria, on the network service of the NTA. Before we begin our conversation on tackling both mishaps in Nigeria, let's uh, take this background report put together by Abdus Salam Jabir. On Saturday, 28 July 2018, the heroic story of Joseph Blankson made the news while saving 13 victims of a boat accident on the Abonema Bakana waterway in River State. A father of two and a contractor working with an oil and gas company in Port Harcourt sadly lost his life while trying to rescue the 14th person. On Sunday, 14th January 2024, the latest incident of a boat mishap occurred in Tungan Leader in the Bargu local government area of Niger State. Reports have it that so far, at least eight bodies of dead passengers out of the about 100 passengers on board have been recovered through ongoing rescue operations. These incidences underscore the boat mishaps that have been occurring across the country more frequently in recent times. Available data from the International Center for Investigative Journalism in 2023 reveals that in six years, Nigeria witnessed a troubling trend in boat accidents with 1,204 lives lost between January 2018 and October 2023. The data further shows that 17 people die monthly from boat mishaps when 1,204 is divided by the 17th month within the review period. In the period under review also, media reports have recorded boat accidents and casualties in 25 of the country's 36 states plus the Federal Capital Territory. Sadly, fatalities include women and children, even though efforts were made to rescue many. The top 10 affected states with the highest number of fatalities from both mishaps between January 2018 and October 2023 are Niger, Kabi, Kwara, Sokoto, Lagos, Anambra, Bauchi, Kano, Bayelsa, and Benue states. What are the causes of these frequent boat mishaps across the country? The raining season is around the corner. Are there plans to mitigate the frequency of its occurrence during the period? What can be done in the immediate and long term to forestall future occurrence of such incidences? These and more will be up for discussions shortly. All right, Abdul Salam Jubre there with a background to our conversation. So let's get uh, started. And I'll get started seated here in the studio. Uh, let me begin with Air Commodore Kennedy Matalwu, who is the director of Search and Rescue NEMA. And he's right here with us. Compliments of the season to you, Air Commodore. Compliment to Ma. Thank you very much. All right. And from uh, Lokoja Studio, we will be joined by Xavier Olawale Adetola. His general manager, business development department, National Inland Waterways Authority, NIWA. Thank you very much for joining us, sir, from Lokoja. Sabaya Laole. Good morning, Nigerian, and thank you for this opportunity to. Good morning, Nigerian. All right, we're also being joined from MENA. Uh, by Abubakar Sadiq Yelwa. Uh, he's a managing director, Hydroelectric Power Producing Areas Development Commission, Hyperdeck. And he joins us from our MENA studio. Good morning to you. Hello, good morning. Kiawa then just to sit beside him is engineer Ahmed Garba Bochu, the director of the Asian and Maritime Services, United States uh, Ministry of uh, Transportation. He's also right here at the MENA studio. Engineer Ahmed, good morning to you. Yeah, good morning. All right, so also joining us for the conversation from Lagos about via Zoom is engineer Emmanuel Ilori. The former senior marine surveyor, Lloyd's Register, uh, London. 
London, Niwa. Engineer Manuel, can you hear me? Good morning to you. Yeah, good morning. Uh, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to join you on this important topic. From Lagos, we move uh, straight to Anambra now. And I'm sure you can already see her. She's uh, Pat Igwebrike, the Commissioner for Transport, Anambra State. Glad uh, that you could uh, join us, ma'am, for the program. And everyone. And the compliment of the season to you. Uh, let's begin from Niger, uh, where we recorded the latest incident of, uh, you know, boat accident. And I'd like to start with the two gentlemen uh, joining us from our Minal studio. That's Abouka Sadiq Yalwa and uh, Engineer Garba Buchi. Um, uh, Malam Abubakar, please, could you just give us an insight uh, into the situation at, at, at the moment? Um, what can you tell us, you know, right now about the latest incident? Uh, I, I think the uh, latest accident was, of course, a very unfortunate one because we will say it was a select act of the driver of the boat. The driver of the boat was advised not to use the boat because it was undergoing rehabilitation. It's very old and undergoing rehabilitation and it was not certified fit for use on that day. And uh, he decided he, he decided to ignore the warning of even the uh, manufacturers of the boat and that uh, decided to take passengers and goods. He carried about 30 passengers and uh, goods, goods, including sugarcane and guinea corn. And uh, unfortunately, on their way, the, the boat decided to break away without hitting anything. That shows you it's because of the dilapidated nature of the boat. So I, I think the casualty, we lost about 11 lives and uh, or rather about 11 lives were recovered. Uh, uh, 12 lives were recovered and 11 dead bodies were found. Uh, because of the nature of the specific location where the accident occurred, it is a very large portion of the lake. So it will take some time before further bodies can be found. Uh, the major challenge here is uh, compliance. The boat drivers have not been complying with instructions of government. The Niger State Marine uh, Department or Ministry is doing all it can to ensure that the boat operators are, um, are, form, are form a kind of a union and they give them directive through the union. But some of the drivers have not been complying just for their selfish interest. We have, of course, worked out modalities of uh, ensuring more compliance. We are going to support the Niger State Ministry of Marine Transport and if, of course all the other ten, nine states will support them with uh, speed boats for operations, operational purpose and we will also support the boat drivers with modern fiber boats so that will reduce the incidence of uh, loss of lives on our high on our waterways and the major problem we have noticed in that throughout the journey uh, none of the passengers were wearing was wearing a life uh, jacket yes so that that became very apparent that once there is an accident of that nature uh, since not all of them can be able to swim, and even if they can swim because of the large size of the lake, uh, it will be very difficult for somebody to be able to swim his way to the banks. So uh, we will still continue to insist on states to insist to support the boat operators with life jackets. We will do our best. The last time we supported with 10,000, Presently, we have given contract for the supply of 25. And another uh, Samaritan organization has decided to support us with 
50,000 life jacket also, which we are expecting delivery. We are yet to receive that. So we are hoping that when this uh, stock is received, it will greatly improve on the safety uh, activity of the boat operators. And uh, then the ministries will now have to come up with ways and means of ensuring strict compliance by the use of the life jacket. Before, the accident was as a result of uh, hitting the tree. And the Andy, Andy, thank you. Let me just put you on hold and bring in uh, Engineer Bucci uh, to also give us his own perspective. And Niger State it tops, you know, the list of states uh, that have are worst hit by boat accidents. And I'm wondering how much of human, um, you know, than natural factors would you say is responsible for all the accidents, you know, uh, combined? Yeah, good morning. Um, uh, the factors responsible for accident in Niger State, you know, that has been at the upstream of uh, River Niger. Just like uh, the MD mentioned, we have a lot of storms in our waterways. These are some of the factors. So at times you find that the boat may have a collusion with a storm. These are some of the causes of accident. Then, secondly, you know, the educational level of the operators equally contribute to the rate of accident we're having. But let me uh, abuse some uh, information. You see, mostly we said Niger State will cut the figure when you heard from uh, uh, news media, the figure are always higher than the real figure on ground. So I'm not actually sure if Niger State is stopping the list of accidents. So I am contending that position of Niger State because in our record, the figure is not like that. What I had yesterday, like the recent one, we have from the media that 100 people, whereas the passengers in the boat we are not more than 30. Then how come we get that figure 100? So let's go back to the factors. Just like I said, one, the age of the boat is there. And one of our uh, problems that we're having is that the preview of controlling or regulating the inland waterways operation rests on NIWA. The state in the Federation has little to do about uh, regulating the waterway operation. So these are some of the shortcomings. I, I think to solve that problem, we may have to, the, the fire government may have to look into it. Maybe the administration of waterway operation has to be decentralized to give some powers to the states so that the state can regulate legislate on the waterway because as we are now licensing the, the operation rest on NIWA not on state so there are many things the state cannot do NIWA will tell you is their own responsibility most of our banks the water the uh, river banks in Niger state where water uh, water transport operation is taking place mostly they are not secured we don't have a good jetty or landing point in our river banks in Niger State throughout the, the, the water length in Niger State. And we have a large body of water in Niger State. In fact, in Nigeria, we are said to have about 10,000 kilometers navigable inland waterways. I, I believe... All right, many thanks, uh, Engineer Ahmed, uh, for uh, your view there. Uh, but just uh, to quickly uh, let you know that whether one or two or a hundred lives, uh, it's uh, important that we talk about this issue and lives are involved and uh, it should be dealt with, uh, you know. Okay, so well, let's uh, get to Anambra now because uh, the case is uh, the same also in Anambra State. I remember in 2022, uh, about 48 passengers were killed in a boat mishap at uh, Omunakuo of Baro local government area of Anambra State. And uh, this year, on January 8, Niwa came out with the report that eight people also died in another boat mishap in that particular state, leaving 38 uh, seriously injured. I, I want to find out from you, uh, Pat Ibuke, uh, Ibuke, 
Commissioner for Transport, Anambra State. Uh, the causes of these boat mishaps, of course, are not different. It's the same. Uh, you know, jet is not okay, uh, no, no life jackets. Uh, I mean, there's just no regulation on the waterways. What is the state government doing to ensure that whether it is one or two, lives are not lost, lives are not lost on our waterways, especially in that state? Okay, uh, thank you for the question. Um, I'm number of states, uh, it's on top of our agenda to ensure that we have um, a safe stylization exercises, particularly after the incident um, in 2022 during the flood incident in October. We shared um, uh, reflective uh, life jackets we spoke to the communities um, telling them the importance of wearing um, life jackets um, we're also um, backing on um, putting uh, more modern boats on on the on the rivers so that people um, would have more um, safer um, um, watercrafts uh, if you look at the incidents of the boats that capsized or the boats that had instances, it's um, one of those um, older um, wooden boats. And with the level of uh, wrecks that we have, um, at least if we have the intervention of uh, Miwa to remove the wrecks on the rivers, then you find you have less um uh, of such incidents but the most important thing is the sensitization of the people to know that when you wear a, a life jacket is to ensure that in the event of a mishap that one you will be able to stay afloat pending when rescue would come and on top of it that you could be seen uh, but uh, we seem to be um, talking on deaf ears, but we'll continue to spread the message because everything boils down to safety and the safety of the individual. Uh, even one life being lost is, uh, is, is one life too many, then let alone the number of lives that we've lost between 2018 um, to, to present Nigeria well, um, nationwide. So we're doing our best to educate the people and we'll continue to educate the people. We will also call on the federal government, now that we're talking about mass transportation, that um, if the federal government should oblige us with having some of these uh, um, water buses so that people can travel safely, not only on land, but safely on water as well. Then the issue of um, uh, um, getting us, um, or assisting us, or you're talking with investors to have uh, jetties built around the suitable places for such things, that would assist in people getting more access to water transportation, safer access. If I access, Pat, I'd like to stay with you. You've talked about education, basically. I want to find out what is the state government doing as regards to regulation? Because if you have boats that shouldn't be on water carrying people, and then you have boats that are too small carrying, you know, too many people and carrying loads, overloading, of course, is one of the major issues of this boat mishap. It's, it's beyond education at this point because lives are being lost, you know, regularly on the waterways. Is, is, is your ministry doing something, you know, just to enforce some of the rules and regulations, you know, I, 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 you know rules and regulations on the waterways, just so that those who, who, are, who are in this business don't go about, you know, causing, uh, you know, harm uh, to, to, to travelers? Yes, uh, incidentally, even um, at the very um, lower level of those people that use canoes, uh, before this administration came on board, they used to load like 10 persons, even with their load, onto these, the small canoes. When we came, yes, we've not brought the modern buses, but uh, we regulated and we advised them and, and we ensured that instead of carrying 10 persons in a canoe, that they only carry five. So these are um, simple things that we can do at the moment to now get to that level where we have the modern buses, uh, water buses or um, crafts that will now carry ferry boats, persons and, and properties. But the most important thing is that safety. Um, the, we, we try the much that we can 
to explain to um, people from the river right they have this um, ideology that because they, they they've lived in the waters all their lives that no matter what happens they will be able to swim or they will be able to survive on uh, in the waters as long as possible so it is our orientation now to tell them that anything can happen you might be very uh, very uh, uh, good in what you're doing but eventually um, you, you might not be able to survive in the waters unfortunately all right uh, many thanks uh, pat uh, uh, we will uh, definitely get back to you uh, to talk more on you know what's uh, happening there as regards the boat mishaps but let's quickly get to lagos now we have engineer emmanuel ilori there He is uh, the former senior marine severe Lloyd's Register, London, uh, Niwa. Engineer Ilori, I'm sure you can hear me and you've been following the conversation so far. Uh, you know, I, I'd like you to please, you know, just share with us your own experience. Because uh, f uh, from uh, uh, what we have, uh, you know, you have uh, practiced outside of this country and you know what obtains elsewhere. What is happening in Nigeria as regards the boats mishaps? What would you say really is the problem? Uh, thank you very much for having me on this very, very important national program that concerns the safety of Nigerians on the waterways. Um, I hear some of the words like advised, not to use, states taking responsibilities, or life jackets, or the ignorance of the operators. All this point to uh, what I would like to say is an institutional problem with regards to inland waterways transportation. One, transportation of the inland waterways is not based on advice. It is something that must be complied with. One life lost is one life too many. And with Nigeria having over 28 states within the inland waterway system plus the FCT, this is something we need to take very, very seriously. So, for starters, it appears, or I think it is, an institutional challenge for the inland waterways transportation system. Now, water transportation must comply with strict technical standards. Now, some of the boats you show that they are the wooden boats and i think the professor was talking about they be advised not to use these boats now when the boats do not comply to proper technically assessed standards they will fail and people will die it's as simple as that so we need to holistically look at the technical standards that support the water transportation system in Nigeria. Now, when the colonial masters came to Nigeria, water transportation was critical to the development of this nation. And if you look at the other nations globally, whether UK or Netherlands, inland waterways transportation has been very critical, not only for the economic development, but in addition to mass movement and transportation of people. Therefore, we need to look at the standards that relate to these boats so that we can have a system that supports our transportation system. If you look at the road transportation system, we spend trillions of Naira developing the road transportation system. But if you look at the water transportation system, the investment in the water transportation system is very, very little. We cannot afford to have that to remain in Nigeria if you want to use our water transportation system. With 28 states and those communities, we need to support them. We need to... 
Uh, uh, sorry about that, uh, Dr. Laurie. I, I quite agree with you. I, I, I was recently in the Netherlands and, and I saw with my own eyes, you know, the efficiency and effectiveness of boat travels. Indeed, uh, quite a number of them, you know, get around and about, you know, by, by, by boats. And it was, again, a source of revenue generation. But let me come back to you. And I'd like to a little bit put you on the spot because you, 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 you were uh, at uh, inland, you know, national inland waterways, which is supposed to be, um, you know, the authority designated to oversee the safe and, you know, uh, effective uh, water transport. And, 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 and I'm asking, how would you evaluate the frequencies of these, you know, boat accidents within, you know, I mean, the, the, the responsibility of NIWA within the context of our conversation? Over the years, NIWA was removed from the Ministry of Transportation just to provide this service. And down the line, many years the line, we are still talking about the same thing. Thank you very much. Uh, for our short stint in NIWA, we realized that there were institutional deficiencies in NIWA that needed to be addressed in terms of personnel, in terms of infrastructure, and don't forget that New House was tucked away in law culture. And uh, to be quite honest with you, they needed to be reassessed to be able to provide the necessary support that this nation needs. However, the resource and the support is just not there. And like I said, it's an institutional issue. New one needs to be technically reassessed to be able to provide this very, very critical lifeline for Nigerian tra transportation system. And I'm not saying this is restricted to water transport. I'm saying to Nigerian transportation system. The amount of investment in road or even rail transportation does not reflect the importance of water transportation system. Just for instance, we build industries around the roads, which means those roads will collapse very, very shortly. But then, whereas if you put transportation in, on the waterways, then those the, the, the development of the economy will be better. This is discussion for another day. So, critically, if anybody dies on that water, it's as a result of infrastructural decay, which we need to address. Incidentally, Niger State is there. Yes, yes. Yes, Engineer Laurie, thank you. And and again, incidentally, we have also uh, joining us for this conversation the General Manager, uh, Business Development Department uh, of uh, 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 NIWA. And he's joining us from our local jazz studio. Uh, if we can take him now, I'd, I'd, I'd like uh, uh, the General Manager to speak on the issue of you know responsibility response to emergencies i mean if you look at what is happening from from you know lagos to calabar to niger to sokoto uh, kebi anambra you discover that you know water travels have become like an Oka okada business on water everybody and anybody can just come up hop on a boat and fear you listen to the uh, gentleman from from niger state despite the you know uh, advice, professional advice given to him, the boat or the, the skipper, you know, or the helmsman refused to co to comply and went on and risked the lives of, you know, a, 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 a number of people. So my question to you is, from the point of view of Niwa, um, how do you evaluate Niwa's behavior in terms of response, responding to some of these emergencies? And uh, let me use this opportunity to condole with the people of Niger State for the family of people that lost their life in the boat missile we are talking about. NOAA has done a lot of preemptive, he has taken a lot of preemptive measures to prevent boat missile in Nigeria. But what happened most time, just like uh, Engineer Ilori said, is the system failure, especially on the attitude of people, to make sure that boat drivers don't 
do what we cause boat mishap. NERA has been training boat drivers over the years, and we have trained over 500. The main issue, just like it has been said, is people not following standard operating procedure for sailing on the inland waterways. One, there is no manifest. We've been talking about this. Then, before you get on the vessel or boat, each and everybody on that boat should wear a life jacket. And then to make sure that the boat is not overloaded. All these procedures are flouted by these operators. And like it has been said, the particular boat, especially this, uh, this recent one, was not in good condition to even sail. But maybe to make brisk profit, the boat driver decided to use it nonetheless. Incidentally, from the report we have gotten from our area manager there, the boat driver survived this boat mishap while some people lost their life. Some were rescued while about four are still missing. So all these are things we are trying to prevent. And to make sure this one doesn't happen, there was a sensitization program in Niger State in September last year. What we are trying to do again is to expand it, to involve the communities and the traditional rulers, so that they will talk to most of these people in their own language, and they will understand the essence and the importance of following the standard operating procedure of sailing on the water. It's just like you enter a vehicle, if you don't put your seatbelt, if there's any accident, then the person is likely not to survive it. Likewise, for the life jacket we are talking about, whether you know how to swim or you don't know how to swim, if you put it on when there is an accident, you will float on the help will come to you. But most people, just like one of the persons said to, they feel they are fishes that can swim, irrespective of what happened. But most times they don't survive it. So we are still working on this and will continue to enlighten and sensitize people on doing the proper thing so that we will reduce both the south to the PRS minimum on the Nigerian waterways. Uh, 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 GM there. Uh, I just want to quickly stay with you. You are lamenting like every other Nigerian about this boat mishap and you're talking about education and sensitization. Please, I just want to find out whose duty is it to regulate you know, those who operate on the waterways. I mean, those who are to impound on these boats that are not healthy on the waterways, who are those to ensure that every passenger uses a, a life jacket, who are those to ensure that, you know, over, over, uh, overloading of these boats does not happen? Whose duty is it? Could you just, you know, let us know? It is the responsibility of National Inland Waterways Authority to do all this we are talking about. But in, in, in trying to regulate, we'll be encountering issues with some communities and even some state governments. So this has really impacted on our ability to do our job properly. But thank God for the recent uh, Supreme Court judgment that was given last year. And that was given last month, uh, this month rather. We are now going to be collaborating with the state government, local government, and all stakeholders in the inland waterways transportation business. I believe with this judgment, we will have less friction with other agencies, either from state or local government, and we'll be able to do our job properly. Thanks, uh, Adetola. From what you have said, it looks like uh, your hands are tied, you know, in, in doing your duty that you have been mandated by the federal government, uh, you know, to carry out. And you are blaming it on community and maybe the operators themselves. We'll get back to you on that, you know, because, I mean, if, 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 if there's no rule and regulation, I, I mean, this is just going to continue. And it is quite sad that people are losing think, their lives. Uh, I, I, I think um, there are rules. He's just told us that there are rules. I think the, the problem lies squarely on enforcement. You know, what, what is the nature of the punitive, you know, measures, you know, that skippers who break those rules 
or who refuse to comply you know, with, 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 with the advice, with the professional advice given to them? What kind of punitive measures or sanctions you know, do they get? I think that, that, that's what probably uh, Engineer Laurie and the MD would like to you know, answer for us when we come back. But let's bring in now the Air Commodore, who's been seated quietly, uh, of course, uh, in, in the, I mean, we're not surprised, that's, that's your training, uh, you know, as, as a soldier. But providing emergency services, sometimes we tend to, you know, look at it from the very myopic perspective, like yeah. providing relief materials, rice, bed, mattresses. But your job does go beyond that, especially when it comes to, you know, rescue, rescue operations for, you know, water travelers. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for inviting NEMA on behalf of the Director General. Let me convey his sincere appreciation and also apologize for his inability to be here. Well, there is one key issue that uh, NEMA is established to actually, or rather is taxed. NEMA is taxed to actually look at emergency and how can they you know rescue humanity in case it happens we'll say emergency there are those that are who we'll say act of god the ones that you don't have control about and there are those that actually is human being that caused it probably during the course of this discussion a lot of things came up about regulation and enforcement in safety, we always look at it that there is no accident that just happened, but it's a chain of events. It starts from a small uh, aspect that you don't really look at. A boat is leaking, and you just you know overlook, kind of it. overlook it. Probably you decide to be emptying the water as you are going. As you go, the prejo, either the load you are carrying or the water itself, probably due to wind and other things, it will continue to expand that gap. And before you know what's happening, probably over time, something will go wrong. So, accident it does not just happen, it's a chain of events that starts from somewhere. And that's the aspect that NEMA always try to look at. What is the cause of this problem? You go to the remote cause. What really triggered this problem? and how can we address it so that we will solve a major problem. Mm. Yes, the board mishap actually has disturbed NEMA so much, especially the Director General. I think he was sometimes last year in um, Yola, mm -hmm. had about three different board mishaps, then Taraba too. And he uh, thought it wise that uh, probably NEMA has to look at the way we can bring all the stakeholders in a workshop and discuss the problem. How can we go about solving the problem of this board mishap? It's something that can be solved. You know, in aviation, we always look at one thing. If you have best strike, probably in an airport, let's say about 10 best strike in a year, what the regulators will do is, they will tell you that next year, we don't want more than either four, three or four. So it's left for the operators of that airfield to start thinking of what can we do to reduce this uh, bed, uh, the bird mishap. Mm -hmm. Probably introduce things like air guns, uh, you know, hunters to make sure that they reduce the, you know, presence of bed around the airport, or you destroy their habitats around the airport. So for the waterways now, that's what we are looking at. What is it that we can introduce? that is going to actually minimize this incessant board mishap that we've experienced. But how, first of all, how, how do you even provide the services? Because in other climbs, yeah. we, see, we see coast guards yeah. you know, parading the shores, yes. uh, you know, waiting, you know, waiting for any, any emergency, and they're usually proactive. You know, is this the nature? Do you provide you know, emergency services in this nature, or do you just wait when they happen and you are alerted and you go in? What's the nature okay. of the services you provide for marine water transportation? Water transportation. I would say that uh, NEMA actually supports the lead agency. We are not the lead agency, yes. but we support the lead agency in 
if they come up with um, a way that they feel best that we can support them probably okay. in terms of providing uh, boats, uh, life jackets, mm -hmm. and all that, never takes it upon itself to provide it for them so as to be able to cushion some of the challenges that they are having. So, right. okay. so, so, you, sorry, so you don't initiate a, a strategy yourself. You just work in collaboration so with the, with the lead, lead authority, agency. which is NEMA. The strategy, the strategy where we are looking at now is a workshop, which already we've planned and the DG has already approved. The thing is going to take place in Lagos, either February or March or so. I'm not so sure of the date for now. We are looking at it that uh, we have to really come up with um, a system so that we'll be pro proactive in such a way that we will not sit down until it happens. How can we enforce uh, safety regulations on the uh, boat users or boat owners? What and what do you need to put in place to ensure that possibility of even mishaps does not even does not arise okay. at all? I, I, I come on, that leads me yeah. to this question. Yeah. You, you have uh, interaction with uh, you know the boat operators as well as the passengers you know on the waterways could you you know let us know this issue of mishaps that we've been having would you say it's a problem on the part of passengers because like the overloading thing yeah. uh, it's like you you enter a vehicle and a driver tells you two people in front some passengers will tell you well no i'm not going to do that and they are light yeah. is it that the passengers you know, willingly accept to enter these overcrowded boats, or is it the part of the operators who who insist that oh, my boat is capacity of thirty people, I'm going to take a hundred, or is it that there's uh, 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 there's no um, enough boats on some of these waterways? That's why you have overcrowding as a problem. You have boats that are not um, healthy enough, you know, having to travel and all of that. Where would you want to place the problem, really, in your own estimation? Well, I I think the problems, ah, let me just say problems, there are just many. One, um, the person somebody just brought up. Boats and then you still enter the boat. You see, it's issue of education. It's issue of education. Most of these boat mishap happen at mostly villages, not uh, cities as such. Mostly they are at village, uh, villages. And I think one of the speakers said something that they always assume they can swim. And that they don't think that this minor leakage can stop them from going across. So it's issue of perspective, both the passengers and the operators. Even in the normal road transport, sometimes you go to the park, there are some vehicles, the moment you see them, you refuse to enter. Because you know that this vehicle is not roadworthy. As you said, some people can challenge the driver. Or oh, you see a vehicle that loaded so much things and the boot is open you know that this one you end up with a lot of doors and probably those that are asthmatic we end up with problems so the same thing with the boat uh, um, travel travel too both the operators and the passengers they have challenges they think that both since it's something that is on ground they can just load anything and move with it you see air travel if you look at it they always consider that there is no parking space up there. So in everything they do, they follow regulations. Because if there is a problem, everybody goes down. Mm -hmm. But with the board, they don't look at it that way. Or road transport, they just feel we are on ground and I can swim. Or anything can happen. So the, they overload the boats as well as the passengers don't even challenge the operators. Mm -hmm. The operators are looking at profit. You see, we, we, we are quick again to put the blame squarely on the skippers, that's yeah. the helmsmen, both, both you know, drivers, yeah. and also on, on, on the uh, passengers. But like you rightly said, it's a chain of events. It starts from point A, and then it progresses, and then it develops into an institutional gap. That's why I like to bring in uh, the MD of Hyderpark, I mean Hyperdeck, because Hyperdeck is also a regulating you know, uh, agency, uh, just, like a, in, 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 just like NIWA institutional gap it speaks you know uh to the efficiency and proactiveness of agencies like hyperdeck and niwa for instance in you know carrying out some very simple functions 
one of the uh, uh, boat accidents that happened in Lagos was attributed to, you know, a boat just hitting uh, a rock underneath. So you have wrecks, you have logs, you have water high scent, you have so many things, you know, on the water surface which affect some of these boats. So how much have you also been able to um, take on some of these responsibilities. Uh, you know, nip it in the bud before uh, these boat drivers take advantage of the gaps to break the rules. Thank you very much. Before the coming of Hyperdeck, it has been a daily and weekly recurrence where you have bought missiles as a result of heating snacks on the waterways. But with the coming of Hyperdeck, we were able to clear the waterways with the snacks to about 68%. No agency has ever done that in Nigeria. And that uh, we are proud to say that our activity in that aspect has been successful for the reduction of the accident as a result of water snacks. Uh, apart from water snacks, there are agencies of federal government that are responsible for clearing of rocks on the waterways. Tell me, for the past five years, where, whether any of such activity has taken place. So, actually, we need to take up our responsibility and uh, ensure that lives of Nigerians are involved. We are happy the president has expressed his commitment to ensure that marine transport will be made as safe as possible. And we have seen the body language. What he did in Lagos when he was governor has improved whether water waste transportation. And uh, we are hopeful what he has pledged to do now will become a reality. And Hyperdeck as an agency, not only responsible for provision of services, we also ensure that what should be done to the community is done to the community. We are partners in progress with NIWA, we are partners in progress with NEMA, and we are partners in progress with all the state governments and the state agencies. We are delighted that NEMA is organizing a workshop. But this goes beyond workshop. This goes beyond workshop. Find out from NIWA, its budgetary provision for last year, how many percent of it has been released to them in order to provide services that will protect lives. So these are some of the challenges we face, even at the state levels. The state ministries of marine transport are not as adequately equipped as they should. We feel all these gaps should be looked into and addressed adequately. The local government and the traditional institutions stand to play a greater role in preventing these mishaps. We have noticed that because when we involve them through our various interactions, we have seen positive uh, uh, perspective of the issue. And I think we, I encourage NIWA NEMA, the states and the local government to work together and use these traditional institutions to ensure that the uh, life of people is protected. We in Hyperdeck have planned now to ensure that we will strategize an office in every JT area. MD, thank you. Uh, th th thank you for the points that you've raised. Uh, let me also talk to uh, Engineer Bucci, who is the Director of Aviation and Maritime Services. And my question will border on, you know, um, you know, the safety of, of our waters. You know, I mean, these waters that appear small, and, and by the way, where we have uh, these boat uh, accidents, uh, usually um, in the areas where you find, you know, women and children, you know, having water as probably the only available af and affordable means of getting by. And most times it's to the farms, you know, to, you know, to their respective places of, of work and all that. In Andoni, for instance, in River States, you know, 
very calm water it appears but most times we, we, we've recorded quite a number of boating mis mishaps so how navigable are some of these small bodies of water that provide you know uh, 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 as a means of transportation for these vulnerable groups of people Before I answer your question, I want to clear this uh, insinuation that uh, maybe we are not sensitive to human life. No, that, was, that wasn't what I mean. I was just trying to correct the impression or the overblown data that have been aired. That was just my intention. But in the United States, we value life, not just human life, animal life. And apart from that, even the resources that we are losing inside the waterway, or in the water system directly affect human life. So we are sensitive to all these things. So it shouldn't be viewed as if uh, I was trying to maybe underrate uh, the rate of uh, death. No, that wasn't my intention. I was just trying to clear the differences in the figure. We are actually sensitive to anything lost in, uh, as a result of uh, as a result of uh, both myself. So. Uh, to answer your question, most of our waterways are actually navigable. Apart from the challenges that we are having on the storms that are there in some area, there are some area are, are rocky. These are just some of the problem. If not, our waterways are highly navigable because the water volume is high for a, a boat to sail safely. So our only challenge now is to clear those I mean those uh, uh, storms that are dead trees inside the water. And I, as it has been said, we need to control the use of boats. We have made that effort for more than five years now. We have been providing life jacket. And it's unfortunate, most of the, the missile we have recorded, you hardly see a single person wearing life jacket out of the passengers in the boat. We are trying to sensitize the boat operators, not only the boat operators, we have even included the local government chairman, the community leaders. Last year we had our last meeting in November with the operators and their leaders. We questioned them on this, that we are going to take a decisive measure. We want to see, even if the life jacket is not adequate, when we supply, the state has supplied life jacket. Um, high paddock equally distribute life jacket to the communities. But unfortunately, hardly, when there is an event of what we have, you hardly see a single person wearing life jacket out of the passengers that were on board. So we, we are in discussion with both high paddock and NIWA on how to control the rate of accident on our waterways. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Engineer Ahmed. Uh, the conversation continues, but let's uh, take a break now. Still right, uh, welcome back. It's still good morning, Naja, live on the network service of the NTA. And the conversation continues. Uh, we're still talking about safety on our waterways. And I'd like to get to the Commissioner of Transport now in Anambra State, uh, Pat Igwebuike. You know, I'd like to start my question, you know, with this popular cliche that we get to hear, uh, that prevention is better than cure. Unfortunately, uh, from you know recent events as regards uh, boat mishaps in this country, you may want to put it this way that uh, we prefer to organize the funeral party rather that prevents the deaths themselves. I say that because uh, from the issues that have been mentioned so far, life jackets, getting uh, new boats, and then if you like uh, uh, machine-operated boats, you know to 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 ply waterways, getting an official to stay, uh, you know by by this. Uh, uh, you know, points to ensure that the operators do the right thing can, you know, prevent some of these deaths that we see. But instead, when the mishaps happen, we see state governments, you know, in a hurry uh, to uh, provide uh, relief materials to victims, uh, to compensate uh, victims and all of that. And all of that could have been put first and foremost in, in providing the essentials just so the deaths do not occur. 
So that's why I said we prefer to organize the funeral parties in this case than prevent the deaths. Uh, Pat Igwebike, I want you to please respond to me. If that is the case in Anambra State, you know, if that's the direction that the state government is looking at, or, you know, you're actually looking at how to prevent these deaths. And uh, while you respond to that, there are also reports that uh, the state government intends to compensate uh, victims from the latest uh, boat mishap in that state. And uh, that's talking about compensate those uh, uh, in uh, Ogbaru. And uh, that's, uh, you know, that's a recent development. Meanwhile, those that were affected uh, two years ago in the Anambra East event have not been compensated. Please, could you speak to these issues? Um, I don't quite understand your question. You, you, you're not clear. My question to you first and foremost is that when both mishaps happen, compensations, you know, are being carried out by state governments. It's like saying, oh, uh, the funeral parties, having to organize the funeral parties is better than having to prevent the deaths. Is that the case in Anambra State? Because we have mentioned the issues that are responsible for these boat mishaps, like life jackets not being available. And this could be easily be provided by the state government. Getting an official to, to man you know, you know, these waterways to ensure that the operators do the right thing. Like if a boat is, is faulty, you're not allowed to, to travel. If you're overloaded, you know, cut down on, on, on all of that. That can minimize the situation. What, what direction is an state government taking to prevent a reoccurrence of, you know, of this kind of event? That's one. And then as regards compensation, there are cries in an state that the recent event, uh, mishap, boat mishap, the government is planning to compensate the victims. Meanwhile, the boat mishap that happened two years ago, victims have not been reached out to. What is the situation? Um, if I understand you correctly, um, I never said that Anambra State was trying to um, compensate uh, victims. Not that the state does not commensurate with um, the loss of lives. You have to understand that the watercrafts that you have on the waters, whether they are coming from Kogi or they are coming from any other state, does not belong to the state government. In the event that the watercraft that gets um, uh, capsized or has a mishap, then I think then you could be talking about what is the state going to do about it because the boat belongs to the state. So in the event that the boat does not belong to the state, um, it, it, it would be uh, even on a, an elementary level to say that the responsibility of compensation does not lie with the state. The responsibility will lie with the owner of the of the boat. But that notwithstanding, um, a couple of weeks ago um, in December, we had gone to um, a place so remote in Anambra, Ulumbanasa. It's like one hour and one and a half hours on the waters on the Anambra River to get to Ulumbanasa. And when we went to uh, the, even with the governor, we, when we went to that local government, we were kitted with life jackets. In fact, I was instrumental in telling anybody going on board that you cannot go on the Anambra River without wearing your life jacket. And when we now got to the state, to the, the, the town, uh, and the local government, they saw us in what they should be wearing when they go on the waters. I personally, uh, uh, maybe as time goes on, I will send you uh, footage. Went to the Anambra River or Nicha or Baru um, or um, Anako to share life jackets. And I would talk to the, the people, particularly women and children, and uh, um, even the skippers, that it is essential for your own life. You see, this is one thing they don't understand. It is their life. If I am going on the waters, despite the fact that I come from a river Rhine area, I wear my life jacket. So these are things that people have to begin with, with Niwa, Nimasa, all the stakeholders, we have to keep drumming it in. The federal government also have to come to our aid to bring public mass transit on water. New, uh, new one have to do the wreck removals. There's so much that we need to do. Somebody talked about having a budget and the budget is not being assessed. This is a priority one for the nation, not just my state or any other local government or uh, village. 
it is parity one somebody also mentioned that um they were in netherlands i was in netherlands i've been to netherlands so many times people from your window you can touch the water and yet they have less mishap than us why because they have invested in it from the national level the rhetoric has to change the narrative has to change we have to put in money we're talking about marine economy and all there's so much economy that can come from this but we are not doing it most of our emphasis is on road yes road is there but if you put in one tenth of the resources we put on roads into the water nigeria will change people areas will be opened up there's there will be so many victoria island and the uh, and uh, all these other um, affluent areas simply because when we in, improve the waterways so um the, the issue of compensation in the event that federal government uh, assists us or state government gets the boats, then adequate insurance will be put. And when will insurance is put, God forbid something like that happens, insurance takes... Yes, uh, 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 Commissioner for Transport, uh, uh, Mrs. Pat, uh, thank you. Thank you for the points that you have raised. And thank you for the footages that you have also shown us. So that takes me to my question. And I'm still remaining. I'm still going to remain with you. And I hope that uh, Engineer Ilori can also take up this question. Now, apart from Lagos State, I am yet to see any other state you know, across the 36 states of the Federation that have, you know, a well-developed marine transport system. You know, in Lagos, you have ferries. And, you know, of course, when we talk about boats, we have ferries. But when we talk about transportation in other states, boat transportation, we see the kind of boats, you know, propelled by paddling. That's the type that are used. And that's why you have, you know, these boat accidents happening frequent, you know, uh, uh, more frequently and again that's also why you find that it is now you know a free for all it is now uh, a place where everybody can just go you know and 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 and, and take up uh, and take up jobs so what is the Anambra state government doing to also develop you know her own water transport uh, system just like Lagos and probably one or two other states have done Um, incidentally, we went to Lagos and we did a study. But prior to going to Lagos, we are in the process of doing a, um, a transportation master plan. And that master plan will also include um, our, our waters. And we are working very hard. Even um, very soon, we should be making pronouncements with investors that in the, we, are, we are embarking on a PPP situation where... Uh, we will be the regulators and we will now have investors that will invest in, in, in um, getting the water boats and the um, water buses and all that. And the regulations will now be in place. Uh, I can't say much on that, but this is something that is in the front burner for Mr. Governor. It's something that he wants to have a reputable um, public mass transportation on the waterways as well as we have on 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 our road transport system so we're we're doing our best um, very soon we will make an investment um, we'll make some pronouncements and you will even call you on our launching of the of the project when we will have our own state um albeit in private partnership public transportation that will be something that we, we can write home about Answer for uh, your response to that question. We're looking forward, uh, you know, to you know that, and uh, of course, we'll be there to. And, and, and NTA will <laughs> gladly <laughs> partner that. partner with Anambra State Government, you know, in this regard, and that's why we're here, and that's why we have given everyone the opportunity yeah. to, you know, part of this program. Exactly. Yes. And Jenai Laurie, I'm sure you want to respond to the earlier question, and then you know, as we begin to round off the conversation, your recommendations really uh, on how we can uh, make our waterways uh, much more safer. because I feel very passionate about the topic. Now, it's obvious from all our discussion that we have an institutional challenge that needs to be addressed and very, very fast too. But before we close, uh, let me just give you three uh, nuggets that we can take away. One, I'm very happy that we have NEMA and, and there's a department responsible for search and rescue. 
Yes, accidents will happen, be it in the air, water, road, you name it. But the important thing is the response time and access to the search and rescue. What do we have in place? And this is one thing I want uh, Nima to take away because no matter what we do, even the best design boat, the best design systems, there will still be accidents. What is the response time of NEMA to these incidents? And what is their coverage? So I believe maybe they will need to work closely with the other agencies to make sure that they increase or they improve on the response time. In, you know, you can wear the best life, life, life jackets, best design boats. Once you are in that water, your, your survivability is diminishing. Two, uh, Niwa, we, we have talked about uh, you know, wrecks and things like that. Why don't we have a waterways that is clear? You don't need to dredge all the water, but once you clear, create a passageway that is properly marked, so the boat operators can follow a safe pathway to where they are going. So that's an issue. Then in terms of the design of the boats and regulations, for goodness sake. All right, Alexander, we have uh, an issue with the connection. To sail from a jetty without having clearance, without being cleared to sail or to, without being cleared to move. These are some of the areas we need to begin to address. It's a very big issue, but let us address the basic safety concerns, and I'm sure we can reduce the issue of safety on our waterways. Thank you very much. And Dina Ilori, thank you so much uh, for uh, that. Uh, let's uh, get to uh, Sevilla Olawale Adetola now, the General Manager, Business Development Department, NIWA. Uh, you have followed the conversation, and you've also given your own uh, opinion about some of the issues. Uh, as we begin to round off, uh, what would be uh, you know, your last words, really, to operators, to passengers? And, uh, of course, how do you reassure the Nigerian public that our waterways uh, can be uh, you know, a safe way to travel? Uh, we are working on a number of measures to tackle this issue of boat mishap. We are building search and rescue stations on the waterways to respond as quickly as possible to any incidents on the inland waterways. Then we have done something we call water marshals of the riverine communities so that they will be able to monitor speak the language and alert us of, alert us of uh, any issue that might cause loss of life. Then on the issue of the Coast Guard too, the Honorable Minister of uh, Marine and Blue Economy has already started the process so that we will have Coast Guard on the inland waterways of Nigeria too. By and large, we will continue to sensitize and enlighten boat operators, most especially on what to do before you move on the water. These are things we will continue to do, and we pray that as we do it, the issue of boat missile will be reduced considerably on our inland waterways. Thank you very much. Let's come back. Now, I, I just would like to ask, because someone sent uh, uh, you know, these questions to me. Um, we hear that a fake or expired life jacket. So in the event of a boat mishap, what is the efficiency span of life jackets? In other words, how long can victims remain afloat before rescue reaches them? And secondly, uh, he asks, he says, um, mm, what are the routine checks a boat driver must carry out before sailing? Thank you very much. I think the issue of expiration of uh, life jacket is that uh, we know with everything, once something has expired, you can't really rely on it. Probably temporarily to give you some few minutes, an hour if you are lucky, before it will go down. However, one of the key checks is, before you even deploy the life jacket, you have to check the dead face of manufacture and what the uh, producer, the period he gave you to use that life jacket. It may be plus or minus, 
you can give you five years and you can still use it up to probably five years six months there about before the team will finally go but the issue is that once expiration so they, expire. They, they expire it's like every other anything that has plastic in it sorry it has a time beautiful so life jacket expired but the major problem is the enforcers don't really go around to check those life jackets ideally those are considered with the responsibility of enforcement are supposed to go around to check the life jackets that these people are using. But I will even say most of the, especially the northern Nigeria, I think we don't really use life jacket. I was in Yola. There were about three incidences in Yola. I think three incidences in Yola, three in Taraba. No life jackets. Many of them depend on this automobile. When it happens, that <laughs> you can. You, you know, yes, but, but, but the thing is, the question is, are they available? Is it that they are not? They are really, really yes. not available. They are not adequate. Yes. No, we, oh. they are not adequate. Well, they I don't are, want to say yes. probably adequate, but I know that uh, the, especially and in Adamawa, the governor has taken it up to provide the life jackets. Be because yes, yes, because I, I, I know again, it depends on. You know the owners of this of this of course. You know, uh, yes these companies yes. who run them because i know in river state there's no jetty where you go in river state and yeah. you board you know a boat to there travel must be. they provide you with life rivers jackets. and Bielsa. yes they provide you yeah with they life provide jackets. you with that life jackets yeah. yes that's a standard yes there. It's, a, it's a standard yes it's a standard but up north here i think there's a gap there's a big gap which needs to be addressed. And the state governors need to see which yes, to take the note state governor needs to take note of that. Okay. So what are the routine checks that the boat driver must undertake before so that the passengers will hold that boat driver accountable? Well I think probably it's well, I'm not in the Navy. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but let me let, let me look at it from the usual um, just the motor vehicle. Mm -hmm. There is what you call uh, pre um, pre-drive operation mm -hmm. first thing in the morning first if it's a motorboat you have to check the engine mm -hmm. it is okay is there probably is there things that you need to address before the engine you oil the level of the yes, engine, engine oil. oil and all that your, your before break. you go to the middle of the river and the thing we go we go off mm -hmm. and you start drifting that's one secondly and it is happened there to me. wow it happens to me again in rivers but well we're, we're lucky we're just a you know few minutes you know to show okay yes <laughs> Yeah, it can, it can be scary, really. But the issue is there are a lot of checks. Is the board leaking? If it's not leaking, what are other safety devices that you have on board? The, uh, those uh, inflate, in, inflatable uh, um, things like tires that are around the board, are they available? Even without the light jacket. If those ones are available, it helps the board too. All right. So, Okay, thank you so much, Eric Komodo. Because of time, I think we have to leave the conversation at this point. We do appreciate everyone who joined in for this conversation. Of course, it's a continued conversation. We hope that there's a change so we can, you know, sit down some other time and talk about some of the improvements in the thank sector. Uh, many thanks, uh, Eric Komodo, uh, Kennedy Matalu, uh, Director of Search and Rescue, NEMA. Many thanks for joining thank you. us. Uh, we also would like to appreciate Sergey uh, Olawale, Adetola, General Manager, Business Development Department, National Inland Waterways Authority, uh, who, who joined us from Lokoja. Thank you. And uh, looking forward to some of the improvements that uh, you mentioned. Uh, in Mina, uh, we thank uh, Abu Bakr Sadiq Yawa. And the Hydroelectric Power Producing Areas Development Commission, Hyperdeck, uh, and of course, Engineer Ahmed Garba Bochi, Director of Aviation and Maritime Services, Niger State Ministry of Transportation. Many thanks for joining us for the conversation. And of course, I uh, would like to appreciate Engineer Emmanuel Lori, uh, Faba Sino Marine Surveyor, Lloyd's Webster, London, and also uh, Niwa, and of course, uh, the Commissioner for Transport, uh, Commissioner of Transport, Pat Igwebuike. Uh, for joining us all the way from Anambra. All right, so that's our conversation this morning on Good Morning Nigeria. Uh, for now, let's have uh, sports news.